Hello, and uh, welcome once again to a video. Um, as you all know, those who are familiar or who had the unfortunate experience when you have fuel problems, besides the fuel fuel pump or the check valve, sometimes you can run into the fuel injectors themselves as being the, the culprit, the problem. Obviously, we try to clean them out because they're very expensive. If you have four fuel injectors, maybe $100 each, you could do the math. If you have a V8, obviously even more expensive or a v6 that means it's six injectors or eight injectors for so you can always start by cleaning it and this is what we go and use for the to the put it to the, to the fuel rail to clean the fuel injectors or this one that they use in the shop but the main part of the video is not this i want to show you how to diagnose but it's going to be diagnosing with scope the only way you could do it properly is by using a scope. There are things that you could get away with by using a multimeter or a clamp meter, which you see sometimes I use in the videos on the channel. But in today's electronic world of computers, you have to use a scope. Now, a pulse is a command from the computer telling the fuel injector when to turn on and off. The fuel injector itself, like we've all seen, has electrical connectors to it. This is the injector, has a resistor in it, and these are the connector coming from the battery. And one from, from the negative coming from the computer. Now, we don't want something to be leaking, just like your faucet. We don't want the faucet in your kitchen to be leaking. However, come to this, we have 12 volts on one side of the fuel injector, like you've seen all the schematics that I used. And I always tell you the other side is the ground that's being given by the PCM. Just like Chevys and GMs, um, also uh, Chevy Express vans, the ground is what turns on the injector, not the 12 volts. So the reason doing that is you want to toggle the ground you don't want to toggle the b plus the 12 volts because it will introduce noise and feedback through the line so we toggle the ground now before we explain this and this is just for demonstration purposes this is not necessarily meaning that every person should go and get out a scope because it's a little too technical i understand that part of it so just for demonstration so you can understand a little clearer there is 12 volts here. This is a pulse. We call we refer to this as a pulse, like a square wave. We refer to this as a spike. Okay? Now, as a fuel injector is being turned on, when the computer wants it to be turned on, there are different types of fuel injecting systems. That's why there are th there are three over here. One you can have, let's say, where you just have individual fuel injectors and you have a driver which is the one like a transistor connected to it turning it on and off by the computer there are some that you have a driver going to if you have a v8 or a v6 let's say one three five the odd ones and the other ones two four six you can have three going to one driver connecting all three all uh all three Fuel injectors on one side, another on the other side. Or you can have them individually, or as a group, or sequential, like GM has. Meaning, you will have injector, a transistor for each individual transistor. Much easier to troubleshoot. Now, the problem is, if you have a group, let's say I have a driver. If I have a transistor, and it's controlling, let's say, three cylinders, three cylinder with three different injectors let's say one three and five gonna be a little hard to figure out what the problem is now could it be the computer can it be this so that's where the scope comes into into our equation into the video so before we do all these things um what did I explain to you also the scope what you have to see a pa in electronics you cannot just look at a measurement and say on a, on, on a multimeter here's 12 volts and this is zero volts because when it comes to 
waveform. So we have to visually see how the waveform is. As you see, as you can see over here, you see a spike. You will not catch a spike on a multimeter unless that multimeter is fast enough to catch that spike. Okay. So that's the problem. Now, going into detail, and if you look at my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, and there was a video that I made a while ago. It was about about uh, Hyundai vehicles that go on fire. There was a recall. There was a comment from someone that I received that he is a tow truck driver, and he left a comment, and he said that he has seen it also, that he's seen that a few cars have gone on fire. Actually, what I, what I just said. And unfortunately, he said that a dog was killed in one of those vehicles. So I bring it to your attention. When these recalls are made available, you have to take advantage of them, especially safety issues. Like a fire, obviously. Can't get worse than that. Just like the Chevy Express fans, one of the worst I've ever seen, unfortunately. And there was a recall for them also that could go on fire. The new ones that are coming out. The Chevy Express fans are the V8s. They're usually for fleet vehicles, which are 24-7 vehicles. Terrible vehicles. But um, anyway, always problems with the heat with the actuators for the heat, the vacuum actuators, electronic actuators, the uh, BCM control module, the PCM control module to turn on the car. They're just hot, they're terrible. But anyway, stick with a Ford. The 350s or the 250s are much better than these express vans. But anyway, besides that, um, like I said, it, whenever you hear something like that, electrical fire, right away, give it back to the dealer. Let him take care of it. So... Now we're going to discuss this again. This is 12 volts. Up here is 12 volts. Down here is 0 volts, but actually about maybe 0.5 volts. We need a ground. When the computer says, bang, give me a ground or turn on the fuel injector, he's referring to which part of this? He's referring to this one. In digital electronics, we call this the, the, the falling edge. It is called the falling edge digital the rising edge is also called the leading edge it's going up and this is going down so it's going from off to on 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 coming back here when it turns off from that it gives a spike so the spike is part of the equation so to say so we're turning on let's say inject uh, uh, injector number one okay we're going to be turning it on quickly, on for, for whatever, milliseconds, and back up. With that, you get a spike. Now, there's something called a peak and hold, where you need a lot of current. If you ever see, I always, I always talk about videos, I always address the issues, pay attention to your fuses. High current fuses, the maxi fuses, tend to go bad, so therefore... This type of circuit has two drivers, one for peak, one for hold. So again, same thing. We're going from 12 volts to zero volts. Right here is where we're being turned on. This is being turned on over here, the injector. When we turn this on to a ground level, we give it a ground to turn it on. One is opening up the injector, the driver. The second driver is to hold. That's why it's called peak and hold you open it the other one shuts off the driver the other driver takes over the transistor and holds it as long as it needed to be opened by who by the command of the pcm the vcm the ecu computer whatever ever you have a toyota uh, uh, honda whatever you have it tells the injector now is the time to be on when it's on fuel will come out of that uh, uh, um, injector vaporize right with the air air fuel mixture you get the spark when you get the spark that's what it's like igniting a fire that's what you get combustion okay now so we start the same principle you go over here you go over here you turn it on you turn it on you turn it on, you're still on over here. So the pulse width for this one would be from here till here. The pulse width. 
for this one. For this one would be from here to here. So it's normal for the ground to be about 0.5 volts, 0.6 volts. Any more than that, you have a ground problem. If you have 1 volt, 1.5 volts at here, a ground, instead of measure 0.5, you have maybe corrosion or you have a wire, too much of a voltage drop. You can't have too much of a voltage drop on the ground wire, which is the one that goes to the computer. Now you have individual ones. This is called pulse width modulation, which is used today. On and off, on and off, on and off. Same principle applies. The computer says, command, I am turning you on. I'm giving you a ground. Give, give a fuel to each individual cylinder. This is for an individual one. So each, each injector in this one will have its own driver or transistor, which computer turns on. He turns it on, turns it on. He varies it, varies it, and varies it. Right? More fuel, less fuel, less fuel, less fuel. Until boom, that's it. It's, it's, gone. it's off. Now it's off. And whenever it's off, you get the spike. So from here to here is the duration of it. Now, let's look at a couple of things. I know this is very, very, very complicated technical. That's what I just said, just for demonstration purposes. Now, I don't expect people to go out and get an $8,000 oscilloscope to do this. But anyway, I just want to explain to you. What are you looking for? I just gave this a definition. In digital electronics, this is called the falling edge, the leading edge. This has to be vertical as much as it can. You can't have this. This has to be somehow vertical. The fall, they call it. The rise has to be vertical. That's what you're looking for. That has to be a spike. You should compare the spikes of one injector to the other injector. So let's say if you have a group, three cylinders and for one driver, the other three for the other ones. If you want to see if it's the computer problem, you could take out the connectors. Let's say, actually, in a, in a individual injectors, let's say you can take out the, the the connectors from the computer and swipe it with another one and see if it is a computer problem. But what you're looking for is every injector should have approximately the same height of this. Again, this also. You're looking for the fall, the falling edge. should be somewhat vertical, and you're looking for... This is a peak and hold, and you're looking for that this pulse, this spike, should be identical to the other ones of the other injectors. If there's a problem with one, let's say this would be down here. You take off one injector one at a time and see when it normalizes, when the pulse normalizes. It's being loaded down. Same thing over here. Here's the principle over here. This should be linear or vertical. This should be also vertical. You're going to get a spike here also. Every time it's being turned on and off, on and off, you get a spike, right? Like we just said over here. But this spike is obviously bigger. Compare the spikes from injector to injector. If one is bad, start taking out injectors and see when it normalizes. Again, there's a balance test that you can do with injectors, but the best one for the trials that I've done is this one. So, like I said, it, it, um, I hope this was a little, I know this was very technical, very technical. If you've never seen a waveform before or a oscilloscope before, it, it's a little confusing. But remember one thing, the computer is the boss. He turns on the injector at his command according to all the sensors. A crankshaft sensor is important. It, it tells the computer, hey, the crankshaft is turning, the engine is turning. It knows, it looks for pulses. The crankshaft has teeth on it, 35 teeth or 36 teeth, and it's going to look for it, actually one missing tooth. It's going to look for the, all those pulses to know that the, the one complete revolution is being done by a crankshaft. Well, I'll, I'll, t I'll talk about that in another video. But please go to my channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Auto, where you'll see other things that, that I've discussed. And like I said, when it comes to recalls, take them very seriously, just like the Toyotas, that had recalls for fuel pump issues. Obviously, no f no fuel pump, no fuel pressure, no fuel injector, no pulse, no spike, nothing. Thanks for watching.